One of the key foundations to understanding precision farming is understanding GNSS. It is the very beginning principle of all that we do within precision farming. So the world of agriculture is rapidly changing and our mission is to arm you guys with the information to inspire the changes that you wish to make. So today's video is all about GNSS. Adding GNSS to our machines today enables farmers to measure and control their farm-wide variability. So how does it work? And what is GNSS? GNSS stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. And it's actually referring to groups of satellites or what we call constellations. Some examples of these constellations are GPS, which I guess everyone would have heard of, which are the American satellites. We have GLONASS, which are the Russian satellites, Galileo, which is European, Beidou, which is the Chinese constellation, and then also QZSS, which are the Japanese satellites. There are many more constellations within GNSS, but these are the primary ones that we use in precision farming today. These constellations on their own enable around 5 to 10 meters of accuracy. Needless to say, I think you'll agree we need a little more precision in our precision farming methodology. Don't worry, we have ways to improve it in agriculture, which I'll explain later in our additional videos within the precision farming fundamental series. How does it work? GNSS and our positioning is all based on trilateration or measuring distances. With the way that satellite orbits are set at any given time, we have a minimum of four or more satellites above our location. In reality, there are usually a lot more, but a minimum of four is required. The position calculation goes like this. Each GNS satellite has an onboard atomic clock. This is one of the most accurate clocks currently on the planet. They are sending their timestamp continuously to our receivers, be it a mobile phone or precision farming device. Our receivers also have an onboard clock. It's not as accurate as the satellite atomic clocks, but with that clock on board the receiver, we are able to calculate how long that signal or that timestamp took to send to our receiver. Once we can calculate the time it took that signal to reach us, we are then able to calculate the distance, how far that satellite is from our position. Now, theoretically, our position could be at any point around that satellite at that set distance. Once knowing the distance, we are then able to begin drawing our position. The more satellite fixes we have, the more potential position intersections we have, and the more accurate our position. Three satellites are enough to get our initial position. So we now know in basic form how GNSS works. Trilateration using the intersection of multiple GNSS satellites. There are a few more important things we need to understand about GNSS when it comes to precision farming in particular. For example, the first and foremost is GNSS error. Errors are introduced into GNSS through multiple weak links, such as the ionosphere. Now, the ionosphere is a layer around the planet that contains a high volume of ions, and these ions distort the signal as the satellite signals beam through them. Another example is time. Yes, we are using atomic clocks, but the mix that is a standard receiver quartz clock and the atomic clock on board the satellites means that we have some errors in the timestamps and the calculation of time between the satellite and the receiver. Multipath is another problem where GNSS signals are reflected off nearby surfaces, confusing the signals reaching the receiver, thus inducing more errors into our accuracy or our position. 
So for precision farming purposes, we have multiple ways to mitigate these errors and obtain higher accuracies, which we talk about in our additional videos. The other important point to note for our position is DOP, or dilution of precision. DOP refers to the spread of satellites above our position. The better the spread, the better our DOP. And DOP is expressed as a value, usually between one to 10. The lower the value, the better your position accuracy. We typically aim to see values between two to three when looking at our DOP. Then within DOP, we have horizontal DOP, otherwise known as H-DOP, and vertical DOP, otherwise known as V-DOP. These are important to understand as they can apply to different precision farming applications. For example, when looking at auto gardens, H-DOP would be the more important accuracy to consider. Typically, V-DOP values are higher than H-DOP as vertical accuracy is not as easy to calculate. So, there you go. That's how we get our initial positioning data in precision farming. Once we connect this positioning data to the various sensors and controls on board our machines, we can then begin to dive deeper into managing our farm-wide variability. And this is the point where our efficiencies go through the roof. And this is where I get very, very excited. GNSS is one of the major foundations and the major principles within precision farming. Check out our other videos to learn more about the other principles within precision farming. Hope this video was helpful, guys. Please give it a like, comment away. We'll do our best to reply and see you in the next video. Bye.